Hello guys and welcome to Big Guns. In this episode we will show you Russian most powerful assault rifle, Shock 12. The story of this weapon began in 2001, when FSB forces ordered a new assault rifle that would be able to effectively penetrate solid walls as well as the toughest body armor plates. The need for such a weapon was revealed after the terrorist attack on a school in Beslan, where more than 1,100 people were held hostage. In order to fulfill the needs of the Spec Ops units, Russian engineers created a weapon that was championed with the most powerful assault rifle armor in the world, the 12.7 by 55 mm rounds. This is the bullpup assault rifle called the Shock 12. It was meant to drastically surpass the AK-74's capabilities in close combat. The main issue during its creation was to make an effective platform that would be able to penetrate solid walls, as well to eliminate terrorists no matter where the bullets hit them. Its rounds are scary even to look at. If you compare the armor from the Shock 12 and the AK-74, the latter one would look like a pin. Yes, the two rifles were created for different circumstances and operations. The AK-74 was meant to effectively work in the harshest weather conditions and eliminate targets up to 300 meters away in open spaces. Its bullets have high velocity and good penetration qualities on long distances. The Shock 12 is more powerful on short distances. It has heavy and bulky bullets that can go through certain worlds, but at the same time lose ballistics on long distances. The Shock 12 isn't well suited for hitting targets 150 meters away. As for firepower, its 20.7 by 55 mm armor is one of the deadliest on the market. Modern versions of Shock 12 have rails on top for optics and on the bottom for grips, flashlights and grenade launchers. It also has the kit of two easily detachable silencers, a small one and a big one, which is half of the size of the weapon. Not so easy after all, now it is. It's time for shooting test. We want to see how many bottles of water can one subsonic 12.7 by 55 mm armor go through. <laughs> Guys, it's arranged for post to try a wide tipped round. It's an aluminium round. It has speed three times higher than the previous subsonic round and they think the effect of this shot will be completely different. So we switch one silencer for another one. And let's see what's gonna happen. <laughs> well, first of all, this thing hit me hard in the head. And secondly, yeah, they were damn right. We had a complete explosion. The difference between two shots is obvious. And the first one, we penetrated, we have a clear penetration. And the second round, the aluminium one, we hit the bottle in the bottom. Our round smashed on the impact and exploded the bottom part and made a huge hole in the box. Now it's time to definitely place a couple of them in a row and see how many of them our rounds will penetrate. We repeat the test. We take white tip round and place four bottles of water at once. <laughs> our aluminum round created a hydraulic shockwave on impact with two bottles of water. As you see, we have a huge hole inside of this box. And it was a brand new one, it was a brand new one because the previous one is placed right here. You can see that clearly. So, our round exploded. Exploded two bottles of water at the same time. Then the bullet started turning inside of it and changed its trajectory. Hit the third one in the lower part and flew somewhere right here. As you see, the first bottle of water is safe. Everything is alright with it, and now it's time to move forward for our next test. We place petroleum jelly on boxes. This jelly is used to define bullet stopping power. We will shoot it twice to see the differences uh, between white tip rounds and the subsonic ones. This one has speed of 900 meters per second, another one has speed of under 360 meters per second. And 
They're both made out of different metal. This one is an aluminum one, second one is a standard one. Now let's place the silencer. Our right hole is the result of shooting an aluminum round with a speed of 900 meters per second. You can see it has a huge entry hole and the exit hole is of the same size. It exploded on impact. It smashed uh, inside of this petroleum jelly. The other one, the subsonic round on the other hand, is way more accurate. It has thinner entry hole and a thinner exit one. Engineers at the range believe that if we placed another one, another petroleum jelly, this one, the aluminum one, would have stopped because it has way lesser stopping power, while this one says its speed and its ballistic characteristics for the distances. We added one more round. We added an armor piercing round, black tip, uh, supersonic white tip with aluminum round and a subsonic round. We'll be shooting them one by one in this fine block, which is 30 centimeters thick. The armor piercing one, the aluminum round, and the subsonic one. Let's see the difference. So, we have three entry holes, but only two exit ones. Our aluminum round stopped somewhere in the middle of this block, and we have two clear shots, two penetrations from an armor piercing round and from a heavy subsonic round. So, now we will take another block, it's, it will be the same one, to find out which one will go deeper or if they both will penetrate it. We continue our test, only two rounds now. Armor piercing one and a subsonic one. Here are two entry holes. Two exit ones and two entry holes right here, but no exit ones on this side. The ladder board peeled off, you can clearly see that, and both of the rounds tapped somewhere inside. Uh, to be honest, I feel like we can see the subsonic rounds tucked somewhere right here, but I cannot see the armor piercing one. Nevertheless, it's time to move forward and it's time for body armor plates. Now we have an armor piercing round against the third grade class body armor plate. There is no way this body armor stops it. Oh, by the way guys, we placed a tactical bottle of water behind it, so we will see uh, whether or not it, our round penetrates both of them. A plate, and a bottle of water. Our round stopped inside of this body armor blade. It didn't go through. I can feel the tip in the back, but I expected it to penetrate the plate. Somehow it didn't. Well, you can see it splashed. It didn't go inside of this arm plate. It destroyed the upper layer and went inside of it. But it didn't go through it. We gotta cut it open and see it from the back. The results of our shot are not as good as we expected them to be. Uh, we penetrated the plate, but our bullet didn't go through all of the layers. We was, it was supposed to penetrate the plate, the wood, and the bottle of water from the back. Maybe it happened because our vest wasn't fixed right here and it played it like that. <sighs> Maybe. It's just not supposed to happen. But we will try it again. We will 
place our plate once again in here. We will fix the west and shut it, shut it again. Repeat our test. We took a new vest, a new plate and another armor piece around. Now we got it. Now we have clear penetration, guys. We have the same body armor plate. We have new vest. We have the same wood and the same bottle of water. The difference lies in these nails. This time we fixed our vest to the wood and that's why our boot went through. In our previous test, it was hanging in right here and that's why the bullet stuck. In the beginning of this episode, we told you that Shark 12 was created to effectively penetrate walls. And now we have 20 subsonic rounds and a brick wall to test. Well, we got a huge gap in this wall. Hope you enjoyed the show, guys. Leave comments down below, hit like and subscribe buttons, and I will see you next time. Bye.